What is up, guys? Welcome to NPL Semifinals. I have some explaining to do. Obviously, this video is out a little bit late, and Gypsy already uploaded his side of the uh, the NPL semis, so you're definitely going to want to go and check that out after this video. Uh, there's a lot to talk about once we get to the end, but uh, first and foremost, we are facing off once again against Rob Jr., or Poke TCG Gamer 1288, and his Gotham City Golurk. Uh, you guys can see the team on screen in front of you. Uh, it's on the right side over there. Uh, I am on camera, by the way. Uh, I just got my new uh, green screen, Elgato. Looks super good. Um, I'm going to be really hyped to be using this either on stream or in recording, so this is going to be awesome. Uh, and uh, it's going to give me a little bit more incentive to record for you guys as well. So let's go over uh, Rob's team. His team hasn't changed at all, so if you guys haven't caught the last battle, definitely go and check that out. Uh, we basically pulled off a uh, Scarf Durant sweep, uh, or Diggersby Quick Attack sweep, actually, uh, near the end of the game. But you're definitely going to want to go and see that game again. Because we're bringing, we're bringing pretty much exactly the same team for Rob, uh, to, to be honest with you. So his team is made up of Excadrill, Weavile, Z Gyarados, Tangrowth, Slowbro, Mega Altaria, Lycanroc Dusk, which is also another Zemon, Golurk, Alakazam, Garbodor, Hippopotas, and finally another Z Articuno. So, a couple of things that I noticed from our last match. Uh, his most ideal rocker in the matchup is Lycanroc Dusk. It carries the Acel Rock, which heavily hits my team. My Cloyster, my Mega Aerodactyl, even my uh, my Coco for really good damage. Um, another thing that's likely to come is going to be Excadrill and or Tangrowth, uh, just as a check to my Tapu Coco. Obviously, that thing is a big threat to his team. Uh, there are also other alternative checks that he could bring, uh, like Golurk. Golurk's a really good one. Uh, Hippopotas, he's got other grounds uh, as well. He's got three, t three grounds total on his team, so uh, you wouldn't expect me to want to bring Coco, but I'm taking advantage of that once again if you guys caught the last game. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, and then, of course, uh, he's also got... Uh, the Mega Altaria, likely to come. Uh, this is his Mega Pokemon. Uh, he's going to want to bring it in, in playoffs for sure. He's going to want to take full advantage of the fact that he's got a really strong uh, setup sweeper on his side. Or something that just defensively tanks everything that I can throw at him. Uh, he did bring Articuno last time. And Articuno was a little bit of a problem for me because its speed tier is really good against my team. It ties with a lot of my faster mons like Yuxi and, and Silvali. And uh, Ice plus Flying is very hard for me to switch into uh, on my team in general. If you look at the, the team up at the top, uh, I don't really have anything that wants to switch into the combination of those two typings. So uh, Articuno looking really, really good in this matchup. Uh, other things that I did see in some mocks, we got the Garbodor. Uh, Scarf Alakazam was something that I expected to come. Uh, because he did have the potential to lose to Cloyster the last time we played. So I really, really did feel like Scarf Alakazam was going to come this game. Uh, and then we've got uh, other little things like Weavile. Weavile is a very, very huge threat. But I feel Rob's problem with bringing Weavile is that it has a very hard time fitting on the team uh, in general. Um, because he has to make room for so many defensive checks to, to some of my offense, uh, and it doesn't leave a lot of room for for Weavile to do work offensively. Now, obviously, I do have things to deal with Weavile uh, should it come. So, very first mon on the team is, of course, Yuxi, Knowledge, uh, with Colberberry, Levitate, makes us immune to his three ground types, other than, of course, uh, the Iron Head from Excadrill or the Shadow Punch from a potential Golurk. Uh, we've also got U-Turn, Knock Off, Memento, and Stealth Rock on the set, same as last time. Uh, the Culberberry is going to pretty much ensure that I take uh, a Jolly uh, Life Orb Knock Off into another one almost all of the time against Weavile. I could have EV'd it a little bit differently, but this also allows me for a lot more speed uh, on Yuxi and allows me to take special hits from things like his Articuno uh, and his Alakazam should it lock itself into Psychic at any point in the game, so things like that. Uh, and um, <coughs> Stealth Rock, obviously very good uh, for his team in general, for the Weavile, for the Gyarados, for breaking Sashes, uh, for chipping things, putting them in range of my Cloister that you guys are going to see later. And uh, Memento is really nice because it's another blocker move, kind of like Taunt. Uh, it stops him from defogging or rapid spinning if his drill ends up being slower than my Yuxi. So that's going to be really nice for me. Uh, moving on to the next mod on the team, we've got Terror, and I'm actually going to switch it over to Mega, and I did this the last time I recorded this video. I ended up having to re-record uh, the video because I uh, because things changed. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to the end. But anyway, uh, we got Roost, Toxic, Taunt, and Fire Fang on this set. Very strange spread. 
Uh, the speed is there for the Weavile, um, max speed Weavile covering that, absolutely, I need to, I need to force it into Ice Shard or to be Scarfed uh, to be able to, to take care of me. Uh, this is essentially the same set I brought last time, it's EV to be able to take on his Mega Altaria, his Slowbro, his Tangrowth, even though they can hit me with super effective moves as I Roost, uh, or just very powerful stab in the case of Altaria, it still gives me the option to Toxic Stall them down with Taunt, and that's going to be really, really nice for me, so I can keep them from recovering with taunt and just roost stall uh, and have toxics on them uh, and really prevent him from being able to get rid of the status on them and that's that's what arrow's main function is it's also a great revenge killer for some of his mons like i mentioned weavile uh excadrill a very weakened tang growth uh even something as far as alakazam firefang still going to do a lot to articuno especially so all of those threats Moving on, we've got uh, Innuendo coming back this week with uh, same set, exactly the same set, except I made a slight adjustment uh, to the set because I saw uh, Rob's EV spread on his um, on his Excadrill, uh, and it was a Scarf Drill, and it was the exact speed that I expected him to bring. Um, this time I'm covering Max Speed Drill. I just shaved off a little bit of my attack, and there's a very good reason for this. The reason I had so much attack last time was I was trying to cover Tangrowth, uh, specifically a, a fully physically defensive Tangrowth, but that's very unlikely to come. He's more likely to bring uh, a mixed defensive Tangrowth like he brought last time against me, so I think that's fine. And the other reason is that Articuno... If it's at full, it can always take uh, Icicle Spear from this specific spread, uh, so long as it has a good amount of HP investment. Uh, but I have a game plan going into this. You guys saw Taunt, you guys saw Memento. Uh, I have Taunt on Coco as well, which I'm about to show you guys. And I have another way of stopping his hazard, uh, his hazard removal, excuse me. So that's going to be crucial. Uh, and I think having the extra speed is really going to ensure that uh, no variant of Scarf Drill that he brings can outspeed me after I get off my Shell Smash. Uh, Charty Berry is there, of course, for the Lycan Rock. Make sure that thing can't uh, revenge kill me. Or even kill me with a stone edge if it's initially in, so that's really, really good. Uh, especially if I'm behind a reflect. Uh, and then Hidden Power Electric was what caught Rob last time. This time I'm not going to click Hidden Power Electric on his... Um on his Slowbro because I expect it to be either uh, Wakan Berry or uh, a more specially defensive set and two signal beams at plus two will take care of it. So that's what I'm going to prioritize is, is basically clicking signal beam. Hidden Power Electric is really only there for the, the Gyarados. It's still better than Rock Blast because one Rock Blast can miss and two Hidden Power Electric is four times effective plus I'm running a lot of special attack investment. So I think it's ultimately way way better than, uh, than Rock Blast. Signal beam already hits the uh, uh, the Weavile really hard, so that doesn't matter. Uh, moving on, we have Tapu Koko Captain Crunch coming this week uh, with, uh, or this <laughs> in semis, excuse me, with Reflect Light Screen, Taunt, and U-Turn, and uh, that's going to uh, allow us to, to play around with our setup sweepers, uh, specifically Cloyster and one other one. Um, so we've got uh, Taunt to prevent the defog. Once again, we've got the U-Turn to get on out of there. The speed is for Weavile. Uh, max HP with a little bit of spit up to be able to take on Altaria better. Uh, if it comes as a special set, if it's physical, I'm not too worried about it. And then, uh, obviously, like I said, U-Turn from Momentum get into my sweepers that I mentioned uh, just a second ago. Next up, we've got him on that absolutely destroys him, and we already know this uh, from having seen it blow back Tangrowth turn 1 uh, or turn Three, turn two or th turn three uh, of our last game when we played in week uh, seven, I believe it was. Um, yeah, week seven. And that is uh, Matter, Diggersby, Choice Banded, Return, Earthquake, Quick Attack, uh, U-Turn, excuse me. Uh, return, U-Turn, Earthquake, Quick Attack, Max, Adamant, enough speed for a max speed tank growth, as well as 144 in HP and 4 in defense. Behind a uh, Light Screen and Reflect, there is nothing on his team other than Banded, Icicle Crash, I believe, from Weavile that can knock me out from full. Uh, absolutely nothing on his team now that I'm looking at it. Maybe Z Ice Beam or Z Blizzard from Articuno. Like, those are really the only two things. This is two Ice types. Everything else cannot knock me out from full. I pretty much get a free kill with Diggersby uh, once, it, uh, once it comes in behind screens. So this is a great mod to put on pressure against this team late game. Quick Attack is also a very nice revenging tool, as we saw last game. So that's going to be really good for us. And then finally, we have our RCS 50% Silvali Ghost. So... The last time we played, the thing that stopped my sweep was his Excadrill spinning on me. This time, I'm not going to let that happen. If he ends up being Scarf Drill, then I go into Silvali Ghost, and uh, you guys can see the set. It's max attack adamant with uh, almost 
full speed, uh, I wanted to cover the Gyarados. So I went to 288, and then I have 8 in HP, obviously, because behind screens, this thing has a ridiculous amount of bulk already. Uh, and then you pack on multi-attack Ghost. If you look at Rob's team, he has nothing for Ghost types. Like, his Ghost switching is completely non-existent outside of Weavile, and that thing does not take Iron Head. And I have Iron Head there specifically for, uh, one, the Weavile, two, the Lycan Rock if uh, multi-attack isn't enough for it and also for the Mega Altaria, so those are going to be really good. Multi-attack hits literally everything else. I don't need Iron Head for anything else. It's really just those those guys, and then Flame Charge is going to ensure that my speed is going up simultaneously, so it's like I have a... If I get up two Flame Charges, it's like I have two Dragon Dances on Silvali, uh, of course, with the Swords Dance in tandem. So this is uh, this is a really scary set for him. Uh, if he decides to bring Defog Altaria, then obviously I mentioned the, the multiple ways that I have to stop it from defogging, being Taunt, Taunt, Memento, because uh, I expect a fatter set. He's probably not going to outspeed my Uxie. And uh, then if he ends up bringing Rapid Spin, I can stop the spin, end up going into Cloyster and sweeping that way. So, um, obviously, an AV, uh, an AV um, Slowbro is not going to be carrying uh, Thunder Wave, because it can't. And a specially defensive Slowbro is going to have a hard time taking hits anyway. And behind a light screen, it shouldn't be able to, to knock me out. So that's going to be the game plan uh, that I'm looking for with this game. Um, Scarf Alex Alakazam is something that can put a damper in my plans, obviously. So that's something I'm going to have to watch out for. Uh, it's something that I thought about in prep. Uh, ultimately, if it locks itself into a psychic move while I have... Um, while well, I have screens up, then I get in Diggersby and I U-turn for freeze, or just click return. So that's really, really good. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the team, guys. We're gonna get into the game, and I'm gonna show you guys how it went down. So here we go. Uh, I'm behind the <laughs> the layout here. Uh, that's the only way I could really fit on screen without obstructing anything. So uh, as we can see, Rob brought a very interesting team. Uh, this time he once again did not bring the Weavile. There's no Tang growth. Uh, which I was kind of surprised about, and then I looked further and I'm like, his only Coco check is Olurk, so he's really banking on me not being like hyper offensive with Coco, uh, and rightly so because I showed my I showed my cards last time we played. So uh, I'm looking at the matchup and I'm thinking, okay, uh, I don't see Excadrill either, so I know he doesn't have Rapid Spin, so I need to identify which of the two is his Defogger, either Articuno or his uh, his Altaria. That's going to be something I'm going to want to do very early game. And uh, I just decide to lead with uh, with Uxie, I believe, um, turn one. No, Cloyster, excuse me. So uh, I'm going to explain this lead. Um, the reason I led with Cloyster is because if he led with Golurk, no matter what, he got up rocks for free. Unless I led with Cloyster and I forced him into attacking me. Uh, and if he went into Slowbro, then that's fine. That's when I would get in my Uxies. But instead, um, he ends up leading with Altaria. I want to cover the potential of him being extremely f fast and having Hyper Voice. Uh, I know it's very unlikely, but it's still on the table, so I'm going to scout for it first and go into Yuxi that I know can take the Hyper Voice, and he ends up going to Slowbro, so this is really nice for me. He's going to switch back into his Altaria as I get up my rocks. So this indicates to me that his Altaria is probably going to prioritize removing the rocks. It's probably his Defogger. I know that he's like bringing Defog Altaria this uh, this season. He's going to, uh, I'm going to U-turn out of here, and I am going to go into my Aerodactyl, as he's going to go for the Defog, so this is very nice for me, obviously. Uh, I'm in with Arrow for free, uh, as I get off a of Mega Evolution, and I go for the Toxic, and I catch the Slowbro, so this is going to be really good for later in the game. If I'm able to keep up rocks, his Slowbro has to come in on, uh, on rocks while toxic to deal with my Cloyster, so that's really, really solid for me. And, uh, I'm going to switch out of my Aerodactyl, I'm going to go into Uxie. Once again, I'm going to prioritize getting up rocks right here. Uh, he goes for a Scald, that's fine with me. I'm going to get up rocks, his Slowbro's toxic now, so if it comes back in on my Arrow, it's fine. I'm actually going to go for a U-turn, sorry. Uh, I don't go for rocks there because I predict the uh, the slow bro to not want to uh, to stay in and I can get momentum on the Altaria so I'm gonna bring in my Coco here and uh, I'm just going to go for the reflect he goes for the return um, the reason that I went for reflect over light screen was because turn one he switched out against my cloister which pretty much uh, guaranteed me that he was more than likely not special because I think he would have fired off an attack if he was like bulky with hyper voice or like max speed max HP with hyper voice I think that he would have gone for that play if his slow bro uh, had a way to uh, to revenge me uh, if it could take the hit uh, on the uh, on the switch in or if he had scarf Zam. so I figured this is probably physical so I'm gonna click um, light, uh, I'm gonna click reflect and if he ends up being special for whatever reason then I can just click light screen on the following turn and let my uh, my Coco go, go down and then go to town on his team so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go for a u-turn here 
and I'm going to get in my Aerodactyl. He's going to go for another return. I predict him not to defog on this turn with only a uh, with only a Reflect Up. And now he's going to go back into his Slowbro as I go for a Taunt, trying to prevent both the recovery on the Altaria as well as the potential defog to get rid of my screen. Uh, and uh, I'm going to switch back out into Yuxi. He goes for a Scald. He crits me here, which is not too big of a deal. I get burned. Uh, he can Scald again, realistically, but then he lets my, uh, he makes my Yuxi go down, uh, from the knowledge that we have from the prior Scald damage, he did 23, so that plus burn would knock me out, considering I'm not leftovers, so that would get me up rocks for free, and there's nothing that he could do about it, so, uh, I'm gonna go for rocks right here, I know he's gonna probably switch out, he's gonna go into his Altaria, I'm gonna get up my rocks, I'm gonna be a 22, and, um, I know from a previous turn, uh, that I'm faster than his Altaria, and I believe it was turn two when we both doubled. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just checking, because uh, I think my... I, I think my... Hold on a second. Yeah, my Cloyster switched out before his Altaria, and my Cloyster is actually slower than Yuxi. So that indicated to me that my Yuxi was absolutely 100% faster. Sorry it took so long to find that. Uh, so I'm going to go for Memento here. And what this is going to do for me is it's going to allow me to get in uh, my Coco, which can taunt this thing and prevent it from defogging my rocks and my screen. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a taunt, prevent his defog completely, and I'm going to go for a light screen on the following turn. I noticed that my Reflect has one more turn, so this is really good for me, because even if he switches into Golurk, I'm fine. I can just go for a Reflect on the following turn, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. He's going to go for Earthquake. Now, I'm in a position where if his Golurk knocks out my um, my Tapu Koko, it's looking really, really scary for the Cloister Sweep for him. So I know that he's probably unlikely to click um, a move that knocks me out on this turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a taunt uh, to make sure that he can't do anything else. He can't go for a status move. And looking at his team, this is his only rocker. Uh, and I predicted rocks because I'm at 11%. If he's able to catch me on this switch out as I U-turn out and he goes for stealth rocks, then I'm the one who's forced to defog to get my Coco back into screens up again. So that's a very, very precarious situation for me. Uh, I'm going to go for, uh, for taunts as a result. If he knocks me out, I still have sweeping potential. So he's exactly going to go for stealth rock. Now, this is a very big turn. I go for a U-turn, and this is a Golurk. It's very unlikely that Golurk is carrying Shadow Punch, because I have... The only thing that that hits is Yuxi. It doesn't even hit Meloetta. Earthquake already hits the majority of my team. I'm assuming that he would bring something like Thunder Punch, perhaps, if it even gets Thunder Punch, or Ice Punch. Something to hit my Aerodactyl, maybe even Stone Edge. And then perhaps a Fighting Move, because that's what would hit uh, Diggersby and Cloyster simultaneously. The fighting move didn't exactly cross my mind at this time, though. But I knew ground and ice were both probable uh, on this set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a U-turn, and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to get into my Silvali Ghost. Yes, it's one of my sweepers, but I can afford it to take a hit right now because I'm, be I'm behind a Reflect, and I'm max HP. Uh, no, I'm not max HP. What am I saying? I'm just behind a Reflect, and I'm, pr I'm pretty bulky because of the... Uh, because of the screens right now. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Silvali Ghost, and he actually ends up going for a Dynamic Punch on my switch out into my Ghost type. So this is absolutely huge for me. I know that I outspeed literally um, four... Right now, I'm confirmed four out of six Mons are outsped. He switched up his move on his Golurk. He's not Scarfed. Uh, his Slowbro is obviously not Scarfed. Uh, Gyarados, probably not Scarfed. It's more than likely Z. And Altaria, we already have confirmation that I'm faster than. So all I need to do is outspeed the Articuno. And this is looking really, really good right here. So I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. He's going to go directly into Zaltaria as I go for the Swords Dance. I'm guessing he thought he could live whatever I would go for, or that I was potentially a special set, which is also very uh, possible on Silvoli Ghost. But I'm going to end up I'm going to end up going for Swords Dance. I know that I outspeed this thing. I outsped I, I sped Crep Gera, so I'm definitely speed creeping Altaria. And I calc, and uh, no Altaria lives this Iron Head and goodbye alt. So he just lost his defogger. So this is very, very big uh, because now his Articuno takes 50, his Gera takes 25, and his Slowbro is taking damage every time it, switch, it switches in, which means that opens the door cloister later on. So he's now going to go into his Gyarados. Uh, I calc plus one uh, multi-attack to Gyarados, and uh, it's got a pretty good chance to kill, actually. So I'm going to fire it off, and uh, down goes Gera. So that's two, two Mons killed. Now he's going to go into his Articuno. Um, I was pretty sure that I was faster than this. I uh, wasn't 100% sure, but I guess he could be faster. Uh, if he got off a defog here, it wasn't the end of the world. Basically, I'm looking at his team, and I'm like, if he doesn't manage to get off damage on me this turn, 
um, the three last ones are weak to Ghost on his squad. And this is kind of what I prepped for, was to put myself in a position to where I could kill off all of his Ghost weaknesses. Uh, and he ended up bringing three. I expected two, being Slowbro and the Alakazam, but he ended up bringing three. So that's absolutely huge for me. Uh, I'm going to end up going for the multi-attack. I see that it kills a max HP Articuno. I don't have to end up going for Iron Head in case, for whatever reason, he's Babiri Berry. Uh, we're going to just hit him with the, uh, the neutral move. And now... He's going to go into Slowbro. I'm assuming he was waiting until my light screen wore off so that he could get off bigger damage with his Slowbro so that he could revenge kill me with Alakazam. Uh, it's very unfortunate, though, because on this turn, I'm going to end up critting the Slowbro, and that's going to go straight down. And uh, now all that's left is the Zam, which doesn't even have Shadow Ball on it. And as predicted, it's not a Focus Sash set, so I'm ex I was expecting it to be Scarf. I'm assuming that's what it was. I haven't taken a look at Rob's team. But Rob is going to forfeit right here, and that means that we... The Montreal Habsols advance into the finals of the of the National Pokeball League. Now, we're not actually in finals, guys. Um, we're going to make uh, the big reveal here for anybody that doesn't already know. I, know. I know that the majority of the Draft League community already knows what's going on. Um, go and check out Gypsy's game. Uh, it's, it's a long video, but it's definitely worth the watch um, for somebody that's been in this league uh, and has carried it to... Uh, I would say partly he's partly responsible for what is considered its competitive status uh as it stands right now so uh if you guys want to go and check that out definitely i would definitely recommend that uh go and check out his uh his side of the game but basically what happened in the game with maddie and gypsy is that uh gypsy got um played pretty hard for, by maddie's keldeo i would say uh the game was completely in maddie's control at some point and um Gypsy conceded to the fact that he was going to end up losing to the Keldeo. So for the first time in four seasons, Gypsy was not going to be in finals. However, Maddie decided that he wanted his last game in the NPL to be against Gypsy. So uh, what he did was he let the timer run down because that's a running joke now. Um, and he ba they basically double forfeited because... Uh, it was very clear that Gypsy was going to lose that game. Everybody clearly agreed on it. And Maddie decided that he didn't want to play finals. So, where does that leave us? Our two possible opponents for NPL finals. Um, one lost and the other one conceded uh, at, the, at the same time. Uh, simultaneously. So, it leaves us in a weird position, right? So... We're, I discussed it with Jolt, we looked it over, we gave Maddie a chance to reconsider his decision and try, uh, try to get him to play his uh, his finals game. I spoke with Maddie uh, about the situation. Uh, they hadn't told me about this before I played my game against Rob. It would have been nice to know because, I, one, I wouldn't have had to record this video twice, and two, I could have reacted a little bit differently to the fact that we won this game because as a result of their double forfeit, we are the NPL Season 8 Champions, so that's our first title. Uh, I'm super hyped about that, and I'm really happy to have a title. It just feels a little bittersweet, because I made it all the way up to finals. I beat some huge demons for me in Greg, um, in Rob, and a few other people this season that I was extremely terrified of. People like David, who absolutely throttled me in minors. Uh, people like... Danza, who I had never played before, but I heard was really, really good. He's a season one GBA champion, so that was that was exciting. People, uh, I think I already mentioned Verd. Uh, Verd was a big one for me. I hadn't played him yet in draft league format, and I knew how good he was. So I had taken down a lot of people that I thought I was going to get absolutely bodied by. Uh, and I was super, super hyped to be in finals, especially when I saw that Gypsy was losing the game because that meant it was going to be me versus Maddie in finals. And no matter what happened, we had dethroned the king. Uh, and I would have, I would have uh, honestly been okay with a second place because that would have been my first runner up in a league ever as well. Because as I mentioned to you guys, I've never gotten past the first round of playoffs in any league that I've been in. So that would have been great for me. I, I would have been okay with that. Uh, but ultimately, we end up getting the championship as a result of a double forfeit, so I feel like I worked up to, to kind of, like, nothing. Um, I'm glad that they gave me the title, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's it's not appreciated. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I'm super hype about it, but um, it's it still feels like, like I didn't deserve it in a way. 
Now everybody already came and came and talked to me, and Joel ta Joel talked to me, and a bunch of other people in the league, and they told me that I deserved it, uh, that I, I really put in a lot of work this season, and I did really really well. I performed well. Um, and I'm inclined to agree. I think I think we did do a really good job. I had a lot of help uh, from a lot of people. Shoutouts to everybody in the uh, in the Habsol server. Uh, Johnny, David, you gave a lot of suggestions. Dax, uh, you uh, you definitely mocked me a few times. Uh, very useful. Um, Verd, even you you helped a lot a lot. Adam, uh, there's a lot of people that that gave me a lot of really really good help uh, all throughout this season. Uh, shout out to the people uh, that I at mocks in my uh, in my own server uh, in my Astro J server. Uh, people like BML and um, and Eshan and there's a there's a ton. Uh, I can't think of everybody right now, but honestly, you guys are are all awesome. Thank you all for helping. Uh, out this season so so much you guys gave me um, so much insight into my matchups with those mocks and uh, through talking about about certain matches um, before they would happen it, it helped me tremendously and I really really got a good feel for the type of team that I need to draft from now on and how I feel I need to draft from now on um, I've been drafting in other leagues uh, simultaneously um, one league that you guys don't know about that I'm probably going to post all at once at some point uh, called the CPL. Um, we're doing really, really well right now, and uh, I got basically a dream team that I never end that I never expected that I'd end up getting. Uh, but uh, it's, it's insane the mons that are on that team. I can't wait to show you guys that run, um, especially if we end up winning another title within the span of like four weeks. That would be insane because I think if we make finals, then it's going to be f like four weeks from now, so uh, four or five weeks. But anyway. Uh, and then there's the uh, the CPC is actually going on right now. I haven't started uploading for it yet, but I've considered it, and I'm probably going to end up doing it uh, just because there's a reward system uh, to uploading. Because uploading is not mandatory, but if you do end up doing it, then you get uh, like bonuses for the next season, which are actually really really balanced. Uh, surprisingly, like they did a really really good job with the with the point system. Shout out to Johnny Sticks, uh, Shadow, everybody who's uh, who's an admin over there who's a uh, mod. In the uh, in the CPC, uh, CPC is a pretty competitive league. I would say it's uh, it's got a really really strong p uh, players. People like A12, L5, um, Zamko who have already played. Like Johnny himself is, is an uh, absolutely incredible player. I hope I get to show you guys a, a game against him. I think we play week five, uh, something like that. Week five, week six. Uh, but anyway, that that league's going on. Uh, I basically replaced somebody after the draft was done. His draft was half done, and I had to pick up like scraps from whatever was left over in the draft. So that's uh, that's absolutely uh, not ideal. But I was still able to build a pretty convincing team uh, despite that. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I, I, like I said, I have a really, really good feeling about how I need to draft from now on and, and what my team style is and what really works for me, what didn't, what doesn't. Um, a few mons on my team. I want to talk about my my NPL team this season, uh, how I felt about it. So first one on the team, Tapu Koko, monster. Uh, Tapu Koko is ridiculous, especially if you pair it with a super fast mon. I mentioned this in the GBA draft stream, but like pairing it with Mega Aerodactyl. Shout out to Johnny for that that suggestion. Um, having the dual super fast mons on the team that are both capable of really putting in a, a lot of offensive work, unlike things like a Selgor that are limited in its offensive capabilities, uh, really, really helps out a ton. Um, like forcing scarves, and like nobody brought scarves for some reason. <laughs> nobody brought dual scarves against me except Johnny in in a mock. It's it's crazy. Um, and then uh, everybody was uh, afraid of bringing their flying types against me because of that core. But anyway, Coco on its own just did so much for me. The Calm Mind sets, I had an Air Balloon set, uh, the uh, the Banded and, and, and Specs. I don't think I ever brought Specs, but Scarfed. Uh, I think I was Banded once, uh, Life Orb at some point, uh, Roos sets, Berries, like... The, the number of sets that I considered with this thing, uh, and you guys saw me successfully bring dual screens twice now. So that that, that thing's a monster. Uh, Como I had a lot of fun with, but I don't think that I drafted again, especially not as early as I did. I think it's a cool mon. It's a good stealth rocker. It's really good in, the, in, the, in a defensive role. Offensively, it lacks the power to really get a sweep off. And with so many good fairies in the format, it makes it even more difficult because the fairy just switches in and, and 
kills you immediately. <laughs> like, you need Roselli Berry to resist it, and even then, like, uh, if you if you invest the right amount for Roselli Berry to, to save you, then you're lacking on speed. A Scarfer can kill you, even if you get up to plus two. So it's uh, it's difficult to uh, to sweep with um, uh, with Como. I tried to do it once against Merc. Uh, it didn't work out because I, I kind of misjudged um, how much damage that Zapdos was going to end up doing to me. So uh, there's that. Diggersby. Oh, Diggersby. Thank you, Zazo. Honestly, wow. This thing was incredible. Like, I've never seen a Mon break so proficiently. It really d breaks whatever the heck you want it to. Like, it doesn't care about anything. Its dual stab is ridiculous, and the fact that it gets set up on both speed and attack, uh, its ability to run berries, its ability to be a lead set with spikes or focus sash, like, it's it's a really, really good Pokemon. Uh, I'm, I'm considering it drafting it again everywhere I go, like, it's, it's that good. Uh, tiered might be a little bit expensive for it, uh, but definitely points and, um, I forget the other, points and free. Points and free, you grab Diggersby. <laughs> like, 100%. It's an amazing Pokemon. Uh, Mega Aerodactyl, I was pleasantly surprised with. Its offensive and defensive capabilities are incredible because of its super high speed. Really, really nice. Uh, its coverage is fantastic. Uh, its utility is incredible. Defog, Roost, Taunt. The number of times that I brought those moves on this thing. Um, the number of times that I brought Roost, I brought Mega Arrow literally every week, like, I, I didn't spare bringing Mega Arrow because it's typing, uh, it's coverage, every, it's speed, everything is just so good, it's such a good revenge killer. Um, then there's Silvali, uh, Silvali, <laughs> you guys saw right here, that <laughs> this is one of the reasons, uh, I killed a Mega Deancey with Iron Head on a predicted stay-in, uh, and Stealth Rocks, um, it was able to, uh, I tried to make it check Mega uh, regular Gardevoir and regular Scizor simultaneously. That didn't work out against Greg. Uh, it was really good against um, against Togue because it was able to come in repeatedly on the uh, the Alolan Nine Tails, things like that. Uh, Parting Shot is just a great move. Uh, the plethora of typings and uh, and spreads you can run, as well as coverage on Silvaldi, are really really good. I really like its momentum. Parting Shot is a really good move, and I feel like if you're able to draft a Mon with Parting Shot you have an immediate advantage over your opponent because you're always dropping their stats as you're getting into your switch-ins. And if you design your switch-ins to take hits from their their breakers anyway, then getting that minus one off is just even better. Like things like a little Persian, even I'd go as far as saying Pangoro, like if Pangoro was just a little bit faster, that'd be amazing for it. Um, what else is on the team? Yuxi and Meloetta, the dual psychics. Oh my God so so good like you see as the defensive uh juggernaut on both sides really able to take on fightings and then meloetta able to, to to plop on an av and take on any special attacker uh was really awesome for me amoongus was a huge sleeper on my team and it, it didn't come enough uh, i feel like there were matchups where it just couldn't but when it did it put in so much work like it it was leading kills at some point on my team it was that powerful like uh, it, it, it's really able to, to, to clean well because uh, people often just just sack things so that they don't get sleep foddered or uh, like they'll, they'll just throw away their mons. Uh, I ended up catching the Magnazone with the uh, the Spore that one week. Uh, it did a lot of work against um, against Greg in, in quarterfinals because of the Rocky Helmet. Uh, just Amoongus was was awesome despite having the Electric Terrain paired with it. And like like now I understand why MV got. Coco plus Amoongus, it's still really good, like, it, it doesn't care, the the biggest switch into Amoongus is going to be flying types anyway, right, so, uh, or things off the ground, like Celesteela, Skarmory, things like that, you can spore them anyway, like, they don't, they, they're not affected by electric terrain, so you catch them, regardless, uh, even things like Zapdos, whatever, Thunderous, you know, those guys, um, Cloyster wasn't initially Cloyster. Sneasel, Sneasel I didn't like. Sneasel I don't think I'll ever draft again. Because Sneasel's very one-dimensional and it has nothing going for it other than trapping psychics. I'd much rather a dark that can do other things uh, like Drapion with, with its toxic spikes uh, and being able to, to like earthquake steals and whatnot. Uh, and then you have uh, Alolan Muck, which is absolutely incredible with the like multitude of sets that it can run, multiple abilities. Uh, there are much better dark types than Sneasel, and I don't think I'll ever get it again. Weavile I'm okay with, but Weavile I always find a little bit pricey. Sneasel I'll never get again. Cloyster, Cloyster was really cool. Cloyster did, did some really good work. 
uh, this season. It didn't come to a lot of uh, a lot of games. Uh, it had a chance to, to do a little bit of work here as well, obviously, but it didn't uh, didn't really get a chance to shine uh, because Silvali stole the show. But uh, Cloyster was still a really good mon. It really made up for the fact that I no longer had Rapid Spin from Fortress. Fortress is another thing that I'm really iffy about. It kind of saved me against Merc, uh, but after that week, I felt like it was completely unnecessary uh, on the team, and I'm glad I dropped it. Uh, Fortress was uh, was okay. Uh, I don't think I'd get it again though. Uh, I've had it twice now, and I didn't like it either time. Uh, I got one. I got a Fortress from uh, in the GBA from Necro. Traded in my Metagross just so that I could have a spinner. Uh, the explosions were nice in the GBA. It was okay, but. Uh, I don't think I'd ever draft that thing again. Uh, maybe we'll see. Maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> maybe it gets better in, in Gen 8. Uh, we'll see. But uh, Houndoom. Houndoom was really nice. I'm not even looking at my team, by the way. I'm trying to remember everything uh, off the top of my head. Houndoom was was really cool. Um, I liked uh, the one week where it came, I think. Uh, I can't even remember. Yeah, the, the, the one against Maddie, week 10. Uh, when it just pursuit, 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 pursuit over and over again. And I ended up killing the Azelf, which was hilarious. Uh, uh, that was uh, that was really cool. Uh, Durant, guys, don't sleep on Durant. That's all I'm saying. That thing is incredible. It's so good, especially with a Z move. I'm so glad I was able to pair Coco plus Durant. We made it 24 Z points. Had it been 25, I would have probably never picked Durant because I needed something with seven because Coco was 17. So that just ended up working perfectly. And Durant did so much work for me. I needed an offensive steal. I had a defensive one in in um, in Fortress, and I ended up picking another quad weakness to fire in Durant, and it didn't end up mattering. Uh, and I felt like a lot of times uh, Savali Steel was a good bring against the fairies that I wanted to check. So I didn't think that I needed that defensive steal anymore in, in uh, Fortress. So that's kind of why I dropped it. Um, what else? There's uh, I think there's one more mon on the team. Uh, I'll bring it up on a on a different uh, tab here. Hold on, where are we? Let me look at all my NPL teams, see what I'm missing. I talked about Meloetta already. Samurott brought to one week, didn't do anything. Uh, it's a two-point mon, though. It's, it's pretty good for that. And I think everything else I covered. Uh, literally everything else, yeah. Uh, there's not a single mon on here that I don't I don't think... Yeah, no, there's nothing that I didn't cover. Uh, everything was really, really solid for me. Like, Thank you to Johnny and Zazo for helping me draft and really suggesting things that, that would work. Um... So like the the biggest like the biggest gods on the team were um, were Durant, Meloetta, Mega Arrow, uh, Silvali came through a couple of times, and uh, and Coco obviously like those were the big ones for me. And then all the support that I had for the the rest of my team. Yuxi, I've never had I've never failed with Yuxi on my team. Yuxi is such a good support mod. I just want to put that out there. Uh, the two times that I've used Yuxi, I've had good seasons. So. That's just awesome. This is a really long video. We're at 37 minutes. I really just wanted to, to, to close out the season though, guys. I wanted to thank everybody. Uh, talk a, a little bit about my run and how I felt about it. How I felt about my team. Uh, give you guys some insight. But uh, I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun this season. Uh, regardless if I, I would have gone 6-4 and four or the, the, the great 10-2 uh, and two record, I guess, uh, by now. The, regardless of, of whichever it would have been, um, I had a lot of fun because I played people that I liked all season. Uh, I got to play Greg twice, got to play David, Verd, uh, Rob twice, which was uh, such... I feel I feel accomplished revenging Rob from Miners when he, he double... Uh, be, he double... I, want, I don't want to say KO'd, but he double beat me uh, in Miners once in regular season and once in, uh, in quarterfinals. In playoffs that's how he made it up to majors so it was really nice to, to get my revenge there uh playing maddie was awesome uh who else am i missing dallas dallas was a really cool opponent uh and he did a really good job at prepping for me honestly despite me having a horrible matchup he, did, he still really took advantage of it um what else uh, who else did i play danza playing danza was awesome Togue getting to play Togue again man beating merc for me also i hadn't beat merc yet and I was so, so happy to, to, to beat Merc, despite the, the huge crit at the end of the game, which definitely, definitely mattered. Well, we'll never know because of the fact that Earthquake could have not KO'd. It was a roll. Uh, and then I got to play Abe early on in the season as well. That was fun. Um, taking Abe on a couple of times already, though. Um, but yeah, no, every, everybody uh, and everybody that I got to, to get to know better as well uh, during the season. People like Adam, uh, Greg is always fun to talk to. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, stuff like that. But anyway, 
We are having a finals match, in case you're wondering. Uh, I did save this for the end of the video. We are still having a finals match, and the person that I'm going to be playing against uh, with Maddie's team, using Maddie's team, is going to be our very own Anthony Zazo Iron Flash Gaming, uh, who's going to be playing against us. We may never get a chance to play again, um, because from what Zazo has said in his videos, I don't think he's going to accept a promotion into the GBA main league, so this might be our last chance to ever play. And Zazo and I are one and one, <laughs> so this should be really interesting. We're uh, we're tied in uh, in score. Um, I beat him in GPC, and then he beat me the next season. So this is gonna be interesting. NPL finals. I didn't think that's where I'd ever play Zazo ever again once he left. <laughs> so that's uh, that's gonna be fun. Uh, but yeah, Maddie chose uh, Zazo because uh, he's got a similar skill level. Uh, I totally agree. Zazo's definitely up there. Uh, he's up there with the Gypsy Kings of the world. Uh, I feel like it's Gypsy Zazo, and then there's a gap. After that, at this point, I, I really feel like it's those two, and then there's a gap. Uh, some people do agree with me, some people don't. They feel like it's just Gypsy. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm more inclined to say Zazo's definitely still up there with him. Uh, he just needs to like get back in the rhythm, and I think the D-League's going to help him with that. I don't know if he's going to end up back in uh, in Draft League in general. I know he's got the ITL going on, but... Anyway, we're, we're going to play Zazo. Uh, I actually have my team open in front of me, so I cannot uh, switch to my team builder mode, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, I'm re I think I'm ready. Uh, I'm supposed to have a mock with Johnny as well. He might have messaged me because I have two uh, Discord messages. But uh, I'm going to have a mock with uh, with Johnny. Uh, we're going... Zazu and I... I'll, I'll spoil it right away. Zazu and I are, are going to be playing this Thursday. Uh, so in two days. Uh, so as a result, uh, I'm probably going to be uploading the finals match on Saturday. Uh, the match doesn't matter, uh, just to make that clear, I am still the holder of the title, but this is just something to close out the season. Uh, and then we have another match after that, uh, still for the NPL. Uh, Jolt decided it would be a cool idea this, uh, this season to have the, uh, the champion from, um, from majors and the champion from minors face off against each other in one final game. Um, so I'm going to be playing Techno, uh, who was promoted this season. Uh, so congrats to, to Techno if I hadn't already said it. And uh, we are going to be facing up against him. I did take a look at his team. He does not have one same Mon as myself. So that's really cool. It feels like an actual draft game. Uh, I am going to have to face off against some of the stuff that I've already played against this season. But uh, we'll figure that matchup out. First though is, uh, is Zazo, so that should be interesting. Again, neither match counts for the actual championship. The title is ours. Your Montreal Habsols are officially the NPL Season 8 champions. We're looking for more titles. We're going to go out and get them. Don't worry. They'll be coming, but uh, for right now, this is our very first title, and uh, it took two years, but it finally happened, and I'm super excited about it, and I really feel like I've evolved as a player, and I'm glad that you guys have been along for the ride through this evolution, through, uh, through this long, long ride that it took for us to get a title. Thank you all so much once again for your support throughout this entire season. Uh, there are still two more videos to come, as I mentioned, Zazo and Techno, but uh, for right now, I'll close it off. As I would uh, any other season. Thank you guys again so, so much. Really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy our run and the fact that we are now champions, make sure to leave a like for me down below. No, it was a long video, but regardless, I want to see those like buttons. Smash them. Subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your for first time here. Uh, if you're checking me out from coming from the horrible GBA season that I had and you see us winning an NPL championship, Definitely hit that subscribe button because you're going to want to see more of us. And that's going to be it for this one, guys. Glad I was able to get on face cam for you as well. Peace!